Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Master the NEC, where we talk about the National Electrical Code and all things electrically related. My name is Paul Abernathy, your host, as always, and I want to welcome you to today's podcast. So today's podcast is sponsored by Electrician Pride. If you're not familiar with who Electrician Pride is, it is the place where you can get all of your master electrician, journey electrician, uh, electrical inspector, electrical engineer, whatever, uh, stickers, have phone cases, uh, shirts, have all different types of shirts from 100% cotton to a poly blend. Uh, we even have the Tesla logos in the... Um, uh, God code and family and, and and all this type of type of, of of logos all very unique designs by us uh, that are all available and every bit of the proceeds go to help these free podcasts that we give and shows that we put out so again uh, we appreciate all the the visitors over to electricianpride.com for uh, even looking at our merchandise uh, but even giving it considerations so again we appreciate that and if there's something you want to see us offer, uh, let us know. Email us at info, I-N-F-O, at masterthenec.com. I'm more than happy to, to, to look around and see if we can get something offered for you. Uh, there has been an interest in people wanting uh, knives, believe it or not, with our company name on the side of it, kind of a knife with screwdrivers and everything, kind of like a Swiss Army. Um, so, again, if there's an interest in that, um, reach out to us, and we will we'll make it happen. Um, okay, so today's episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about a topic that gets – uh, presented to me a lot in what is my thought on how to use a practice exam. Now, practice exams, uh, you can get them just about anywhere. In our Fast Tracks program, if you're not familiar with our Fast Tracks program, it, to me it's the it's the world's leading electrical NEC learning platform, uh, and it is over on our masterthenec.com website. Go check it out. Called the Fast Tracks program. Um, people use it to pass electrical exams, but again, it's to enhance your knowledge uh, in depth of the National Electrical Code, and that's what it's all about. It's available in 2017 edition or the 2020. Go check it out. Um, but a lot of people say, well, what, what's the proper way to use a practice exam? Uh, whether they're online, whether they're written form, uh, whether they're you know computerized, is there a right way and is there a wrong way to use a practice exam? And, and you've heard me say this probably on other podcasts before. Yes, there is a right way to use a practice exam. So if you pay for it, you're putting your money out there. If you're getting free ones, okay, somebody put, took the time to put that together. Now, some of them are better than others. Uh, not every question is perfect, and that's the beautiful thing about it is they don't have to be perfect. Uh, they can even be incorrect with an incorrect answer, but it's still a very good question because it causes your mind to think. And you might identify, right, that something is wrong or incorrect, or and you're able to determine that, and that's a beautiful learning experience. Um, so how to properly use a practice exam, I tell people all the time, is you take it one question at a time. And you literally dissect every aspect of that question. In other words, it's a little bit of a secret to many people when, they, when I tell them that, look, you're, th- you're not just there to answer the question. You're there to try to get into the head of the person that wrote the question by using the index and being able to find how many ways I could actually find the answer to this question. Now, again, you're studying. This is a study mode. You're practicing. So you take your time. You're not timing yourself. I tell people, don't start doing uh, timing your questions until you get into the last two weeks of your prep before you're ready to take an exam. Then you're ready to start doing some timing and just hone up on your skills. But up to that point, use a practice exam. I mean, for that example, in our program, Fast Tracks program, we give you 20 practice exams. And again, there's over 20, I believe close to, 20, I think there's 25 plus questions in every practice exam. So there's a lot of questions. Then we give you three final exams. And during our program, we even give you what's called section exams, which are timed. So along the way, you're going to be honing those skills. But if you're not in our Fast Tracks program, which again is available over on masterthenec.com, check it out if you're interested in really having a structured study plan. But if you're using some practice questions, Um, you just need to slow down and look at the question and dissect it. Now, you should also, I'm a big believer that 
you know, some people say, should you tab your code book? Um, I'm a believer that, yes, you do tab your code book for, pre- for exam preparation. Anything that can help reduce your time during an exam is going to be beneficial. Now, of course, for all of our students out there, people that are familiar with our programs, we have our own tabs. They're called P-tabs, uh, and they are basically what we feel are the most important things that you need to have quick access to in the National Electrical Code. They're a little smaller than normal. They're a little more flexible than the normal tab. They are permanent, so they meet all the rules. If your state allows you to tab your code book, then these tabs will work fine. They're called P-tabs. They're available over on masterthenec.com. Go check them out. Um, there is um, quite a few tabs that you get there. I believe over, I think, 135 tabs, and they're very specific to certain code references, okay? We also will have what's called our J tabs coming out very soon, uh, and that is going to deal with all the most important tables that are in the NEC that you're going to use on a regular basis. And those tabs will go along the uh, the top or the bottom of the code book. Um, so I, I believe we're, we're, we're going to probably do them across the top, but we're going to look at all that. But they're not available yet, but the P tabs are available. Um, and they're really all you need. Uh, to prepare you for an exam, um, is just getting to use tabs. Now, our tabs do come with an index that's alphabetized as well so that you can really use that index, and it's great for studying because when you're preparing for an exam and you're, you're doing a practice exam question, whether it's online, free, or you paid for them, or you get them in your study package, however you get them, you want to slow down and you want to take every question and dissect it. You want to use all the possible keywords, all the possible trigger words that are in the sentence and go back through the index and look for all those terms. You're doing it for two reasons. One, you you know that you can't use the index uh, exclusively on an exam because you'll just simply run out of time. So the Fast Tracks program, for example, teaches you code through repetition that you will learn a certain amount of the code by just simply absorbing it. You don't even realize you're memorizing it but you are. And so that's going to buy you time during the exam because you're going to be able to answer questions that you don't have to look up. You just know the answer. And couple that with your experience because obviously you have to have experience in the field before they would even let you sit for the exam anyway. So you've got that element of knowledge that you're putting with that repetition that we're doing in a training program. But on that off chance that you need to utilize the index, Understanding the way to read a question, dissect it, look at, pick out the, the, the target and trigger words and that are going to help you get to the right place in the code book is vital to your success. So I tell people all the time, take your time on a question. Get your money's worth out of a question. Seriously. You, you want to look at that question and don't worry if it takes you 10 minutes on a question. You know, you're not at that phase yet where you got to worry about timing. Right now, you want to take a question, you want to look at it, and you want to look at all the possible words that could put you where you need to be in an index. What happens is, over time, this becomes very natural to you. And you start looking at a question, and you will pull out the most important aspects of a question that will help you get your answer. And you're going to be surprised that sometimes it, it might lead you to the index, In other times, it might lead you directly in the code book to a certain section, to a certain article, to a certain subdivision, or certain item. And it just comes through repetition. But if we have you looking a question up, have you digging through the index, having you look at all the possible ways, do you see what's actually really happening here? This is the secret. It is... Repetition that's built into itemized questions, meaning we're having you dissect it out so that you're going through the index and learning these terms. You're going into the code. You're looking at the question. You're going back into the index. Over time, this helps your your memory. This helps you retain things. And it's not done by accident. It's done intentionally. So that's when we talk about dissecting a question. And so it doesn't really matter where your question came from. doesn't matter if it's a free one, uh, whether you get it from somebody's training program. Um, the, the art of dissecting the question helps with your memory retention, and you're able to really start learning how the index is laid out. 
Um, now, of course, with again with our P tabs, we're gonna we're gonna give you index uh, laid out alphabets as well, A B C D all the way through it as well. Um, but again, you start learning how to maneuver through the code book. And so, again, that is my tip for how to use a practice exam. Get your money's worth out of it. Okay. Now, in our program, Fast Tracks program, we have so many questions. Literally, just overall, in the 2020 edition, there's over 1,400. In the 2017 edition, it's over 1,200. We added additional quizzes in the 2020 version. And look, that's a lot of code questions. That gives you this time to literally sit and really work out a question and say, okay, how many possible ways could I answer this question? And that's what you need to be doing. Now, people that don't understand that or, 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 or the, the people that don't understand the concept uh, because maybe they have their license and they think, oh, it was easy for me, that's a problem because those people are the same uh, isolated-minded type people that don't understand the importance that you have of getting your license or passing an exam or maybe the struggles that you're having. Now, from my perspective, I see students all over the country. So I can see all the different aspects of the learning curve from everybody. So the beautiful thing about dissecting a question is that it's a simple thing to do that is something that everybody can do, and it really helps you learn the National Electrical Code. Read that question dissect the certain pieces of that question that you want to look up in the index, and that will start teaching you what's in the index. And as you're doing it, you're going to pick up knowledge along the way that next time you won't have to use the index because you used it to pull out certain things in a question that probably will be on other questions in some form or fashion. So there's a method to the madness. Um, If you're in the Fast Tracks program, stay in it, work hard, uh, really focus on those questions. Don't submit competency reviews that have blanks in it. Just don't submit it until you're ready to submit it. I hate when students do that. Submit something for a blank like they couldn't find the answer. The answer's there. Just take your time. This is not a, a sprint. It is a marathon. Okay? Think about it. All right, folks. Hopefully you got something out of it. That is my advice on how to use Practice exams, no matter where you get the practice exam. Till next time, stay safe. God bless.